Welcome back to this Let's Play of the original official campaign for Neverwinter Nights 2. We're just doing a side quest here, picking up uh, Lisbeth, who apparently has fallen in with the wrong crowd. And apparently this is the wrong crowd here, and it's just a bunch of goth kids, you know, making out and stuff. And hey, look, there's some undead back here. Hmm, I guess we should do something about them. I actually probably should have brought Castle here for this area, but I don't have them. I don't. I'm just gonna have to deal with it. There aren't that many undead here, actually. Now, I'm gonna use a little... this is sort of a dirty trick, but if you cast cloud spells that have, you know, a set duration, um, before you act enemies actually go hostile, uh, or actually even before they appear on the map, it uh, works Everyone, just fine. Follow me. Listening, really. Hmm. I'm not sure what Hi. happened to Sand there. And apparently they wanted those ghouls as uh, minions of some sort. And they are minions of the King of Shadows. Surprise, surprise. Me? Here, Grobnar. All right. Get out. Get ready to go. Now, Cloud of Bewilderment is... It's in some ways too bad that it's a level 2 spell, because it's far more effective than a lot of the higher level uh, crippling spells. And uh, having a low base level on it means that the low... the uh, saving throws on it aren't very high, unfortunately. Alright, well, I'll clean up all the, the things that drop later, but we uh, did kind of get beat up a little bit more than I'd like for that fight. And sand cure himself with healer's kit. I may actually go and buy some healer's kits. Um, they're not super useful from a standpoint of total amount cured, but since I've been running around without a uh, healer of any sort in my party, yeah, they may be useful. If just from a standpoint of pure, what does the party need? Playing your main character as a um, as a cleric makes a lot of sense. You need to grab a key in order. To, I guess I'm gonna have to loot some of these people because I need the key. There she is. I'll get the rest of it later. And we can continue in here, get and, you know, Attack! there's just get a bunch more ghouls. I'll throw a cone of coal at them for variety. Thank you, Kromnar, for walking directly into that. Mm. That wasn't very intelligent of him, but, well, he is kind of a gnome. Yeah, there's some traps here, and I guess I should probably, you know, pay more attention, but whatever. There are a fair number of spellcasters here, um, and spellcasters have a tendency to hang back, which makes them fireball fodder. Yeah, that one's, I guess, not quite dead yet, so we'll just throw a missile storm at him. Eh, it gets really good. The fights so far in this area are pretty easy. The final fight in this area is actually fairly challenging. Uh, it, the uh, main guy actually has some useful spells for us. Imagine that. For now, though, I'm just going to be charging forward and, you know, if my companions can't keep up, they can't keep up. That's not a problem for me. Listening, it's a really. problem for them. Hope you're ready for the fighting fury of Grobnar Gnomehands. And I'll just have him spam missile storms. Come on, 
Follow me. Keep up. Back here, these tombs back here are just more stuff uh, to pick up. I'm gonna rest up. Be right back. Clean everything up. Nothing really interesting. There's some not standard loot, as in you know more attack, than just plus one attack. and plus two items, but uh, none of it's anything I'm actually going to use. This group you can actually use uh, diplomacy on, but uh, well, I don't have very much in the way of diplomacy, so I'm just going to have to kill them. Um, I'm actually going to throw cloud kill at one of these back groups, just for the fun of it. Um, and have sand throw a fireball in the back as well. Then make sure I send Chandra and uh, Grobnar to attack things other than the uh, place that I'm nuking. Of course, I just walked into it myself, but... Oops. Ah, I just killed Sand with the Cloud Kill. Hmm. That didn't uh, work out so well, actually. I'm gonna clean up. Be right back. I have, we have levels to gain, too. Bishop, I'm gonna do something that... Let's just say, if you're playing this as a walkthrough, I would not do what I'm about to do. Uh, unless you're also trying to go for this know-it-all challenge, because um, I'm giving Bishop Scribe Scroll, and I'm going to get like four spells out of it, but there are four spells I can't get pretty much any other way. Specifically, uh, Mass Curse of Impending Blades, Curse of Impending Blades, and uh, Blades of Fire. I don't think there's anything else that's a ranger spell that's not a uh, wizard spell or a cleric spell or anything. Yes. Uh, Chandra here simple enough. Um, I'm just going to keep raising her strength. A common tactic for Chandra is to use her as a two-weapon fighter. Um, I don't really... I'd rather have her be good with the one weapon than bad with two of them. So, give her weapon specialization and greater weapon focus. Listening, really. Sand, um, increases intelligence. And I can't actually, he actually has a fairly good heal skill to begin with. I don't really care about most of the other things he's doing, so I'm just going to give him some tumble skill. Uh, for feats, I'm going to give him persistent spell. I'll have it myself eventually, but it's just a useful enough feat that it's worth having. Um, and for these, I'm going to take Mass Fox's Cunning, which is a really useless spell, but hey, you know, I got to get it eventually. And uh, Flesh to Stone. Me? Grobnar, I'm going to try and use as my crafting character. Um, I'm actually going to increase his strength instead of his charisma. I, you know, charisma doesn't help bards enough to make it worthwhile. Uh, keep on raising his crafting skills. Um, actually, there's no point in raising craft alchemy. And perform, just to make sure he doesn't fall behind on that. And for feats, I'm going to give him... Eventually I do want to give him Scribe Scroll as well, but not for a while yet. I'm going to give him Craft Magic Arms and Armor. The reason I'm using Grobnar as my enchanter is because we, since he has the Use Magic Device skill, he can cast spells from scrolls pretty much regardless of what they are, and uh, he can make everything in one character rather than having to give multiple characters the uh, Craft Magic Arms and Armor feat to cover all the bases. Yeah. And then I'm actually going to show my own level. Um, I've been deviating a little bit from my uh, plan and that I'm putting more points into Intimidate. I probably should have taken the Able Learner feat at some point, uh, but I'm not going to bother with it now. For spells here, I'm going to have to take Glass Doppelganger again because you can't make a scroll of it and reduce person greater. But before I do that, actually, I want to show something here. Go back through this. Sorry. spell and but looking at my level one list there are three spells I have left here blades of fire which I'm gonna pick up from Bishop in just in a second 
Uh, Detect Undead and Night Shield are both cleric spells, so once the cleric party member joins, I'll have those. Curse of Impending Blades, we're waiting for Bishop. Mass Curse of Impending Blades, we're waiting for Bishop. Level 4, we still have a couple to pick. Um, Grobnar knows three of these, and these other three I'm going to have to find some way to find. Uh, they're all just normal standard spells that aren't listed as anything else, so I'm probably just going to have Quarrel learn them, or um, if I get desperate, have Sand learn them. But, obviously I need to rest up again and get some new spells. Be right back. This upcoming fight can be a little interesting, so I'm actually summoning up the full army. And I mean the full army. I even have a Shadow summoned by Grobnar. Uh, summon 5, by the way, is not a typical summon. It, uh, it has this Shadow Mastiff, which can scare enemies, but it's not a very good thing for fighting. Globe of Invulnerability there, well, I'm gonna try it out. I don't actually expect it's gonna work all that well. Uh, but the hope is that I can cast that and then just sort of throw fireballs at the monster. But, let's get on with it. And you can offer them a chance to surrender, but of course they don't. And there are quite a few of them, and a lot of these sh these Shadow Initiate monks here are... I wouldn't say they're hard, but they're not jerks. Follow me! Um... Yeah, okay. Get on with it. Unfortunately, my party is not doing a very good job of keeping up, so... Except for Sand, who I really don't want to keep up all that well, but... Now, since I have um, the uh, globe up, I can just nuke myself, as long as I only use fireballs. And obviously, if my, any of my other party members get in the way, then they're going to be in trouble, but... Now, these Curses of Impending Blades um, are... Oh, I guess they're all right. Anyway, that fight can go very badly if the main guy, Arval, here casts Word of Faith, uh, which will essentially stun all of your characters for several rounds and sit there looking stupid. Uh, it doesn't uh, end well. I'm gonna clean up, be right back. Most of the things you find here are junk. This Cloak of Fortification plus two gives an AC bonus, which it does not stack with the rings of protection, but hey, you know, it's not bad. And it also gives two to saves. It's not a wonderful item, but it's the best I've found so far here. This Arval's journal in the desk in the corner is part of another quest. I mean, it's just a... it's a fetch quest you didn't know you were on. But... we'll have to talk to Lisbeth, but this area is not over yet, and we don't have enough time to finish in this episode. So, next time, we will clear our way out. See you then.